We can go and kidnap them. Chuck them in the pillar <laughs> cage <laughs> and see how, how safe it is. That I'd pay for. We can plan that out this week. <laughs> <laughs> we can pick a day this week to figure yeah. that out. Yeah. So, are you the second troll? Yeah, yeah, I'm like, who's the second troll? <laughs> this Jake kid came over just to make videos about how shit Chiang Mai is and how a bunch of idiots. And he calls himself a vegan activist. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, <laughs> like some people. Yeah, they're wasting their time. They're definitely wasting their time. I don't know why they suck. Yeah, I'm trying to ask you a question. Cancer's a big community. Yes. Um, is there ever an exception to let off someone's wheel if they surge really high when you guys are going full gas? Should you ever drop the wheel? Depends. If it's a steep climb, yeah, drop the wheel. But if it's in the flat, you can't because you've got to hook at the draft. And it also depends how hard the surge is. You always better hold the wheel pretty much. If you're doing a time trial and it's a hard surge, then you're probably better off just riding with your, in your limit. Unless it's a fi final, you know, final switch back. So it depends. But on the flat, you definitely gotta hold the wheel. Because if you're going fast, you gotta hold that wheel. But if you're doing a time trial and someone's surging that hard, they're not really doing it properly. But if they're attacking you on the bike, then yeah, you've got to let go of the attack. Sure. So you can get the draft. Done. If you're going over 20, mile, 20 kilometers an hour, always hold the wheel. Okay. You get a draft. Yeah, good. Yeah, well, I was just thinking about it before. Um, probably didn't eat enough yesterday, so energy was a little bit lower. But um, otherwise, good. Yeah, real fresh. Feeling any different than the food or kind of the same? Less energy? Less energy, like a little bit, just because I just didn't eat enough. You know, you've got to take in enough energy to have enough energy at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, feeling pretty similar. But it's only like day three, you know, so. Um, uh, going to the toilet more often. It's just like, it really just gives the colon a good cleanse out. Everybody generally experiences that. More fibre, more water, faster moving, like faster colon transit moves. You know, rice and stuff like that are quite slow compared to fruit, like very slow compared to fruit. So. Are you enjoying this or what? Yeah. Yeah? I'm really enjoying it actually. And I've oh, you're doing it? Yeah. yeah cool. And I felt really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How's everybody feeling? Like, who's doing it? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Party? Wait, what challenge is it? Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what challenge is it? Well, one way to make oh. it even easier is to uh, get some organic sugar from Limping Supermarket over and, and add it to your juices and smoothies. That can that can give your muscles more glycogen retention, more more stamina. Yeah, That's what I noticed. Picture. When I added refined sugar to my food, my performance, my work ethic, everything just went whoosh, straight up. The more sugar you consume from fruit or refined sugars, the harder you can work. Is it raw? Any sugar. I like organic sugar, but any sugar. Sugar is cool, Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not, it's not raw, but it's, like, it's not going to affect your results very much. It'll make them better. Yeah, it'll be positive. You've got to train harder, work harder, recover faster. Just because, like, if you're having, um, like, if you're not eating avocado all day or something like fatty all day, if you're eating fruit and you add sugar to it, like, they move through at the same rate. But if you're having avocado and you put sugar in there, then it's going to it's gonna get in the way. So because it's not going to move through as quickly. All the fruit that we're eating, none of this is properly ripened. All this is sugar deficient. If this was, like, I mean, it's good yeah, stuff. Right. I'm grateful for it. But if we were in the forest, in the jungle, we'd have the sweetest of the sweet fruits because it'd be fully set on the tree. The mango would drop on the ground, and we'd pick it up and eat it. Be like sugar sweet. But what we do, we, what we have to do, we have to go pick them green. We're gonna ripen with calcium carbide, and then you know maybe there's like hundred people in a smoothie, so they sort of go, oh, we've got to cut these unripe mangoes and things like that. So the fruit, with most 99% of the fruit out there is unripe. It's deficient in sugar, and that's why the average fruitarian is just like this, like. <laughs> 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 Secretary. 
Music, fucking music, man. Like most of them. It's like fucking space cadets. <laughs> and then they go and eat his durian and avocado, and then it's like. What well, it means, like, you know, desserts and chocolate. <laughs> 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 you know, I've been there myself. Like, you have been there. Like, I remember. Yeah, I've met, I've yeah, met the biggest space cadets on the planet. Like, we're in in Chanaburi, Thailand. Like, we were very spiritual. Yeah, we were, oh, there was one. <laughs> now I can tell you some crazy stories. But before you move on, like, um, you know, society makes desserts and chocolates and stuff like that so sweet. And you know, people enjoy that because that's really how sweet the fruit's meant to be. So they'd rather go for the concentrated calories of, you know, these desserts and chocolates and all that because they're really getting that sweet hit that their body needs. You know, and it's hard for fruit to compete with that, but that's how sweet it really should be. Does corn syrup include, like, is that, do you consider that sugar? That's really yeah. good. High fructose, high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, it is. That's really? why your legs feel like. Mm -hmm. All these studies springs. that they do are done, like, people are eating animal products, they're eating high fat diets, and then they're like, oh, it's the high fructose corn syrup. The New World Order fat. basically wants people <laughs> under carb. It's so much bullshit. Yeah, they're, they're trying to... Who's just having high fructose corn syrup? They're not. They're having a whole lot of other rubbish. They're having McDonald's. They're having KFC. Like, who literally gets fruit and add some fructose syrup to it. Nobody except for us. Yeah, like, so you got a 400 pound Americans put some fucking ketchup on their heart attack burger. That's what's making it And they're going, oh, I've got a joiner. Must be the ketchup. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <almost> <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, and then. Or even the Coca-Cola they play. And then you have, have fat like researchers like Dr. Robert Lustig, <laughs> earning millions of dollars a year, going, yeah, like, bright rice and peaches and fructose syrup to blend it. And he's still fucking overweight. But people are so like dumbed down in society, so under carbs, so overwhelmed, they can't even see the well, contradiction. They, they want to eat the bacon and And they want to eat it. Yeah, yeah. They, they want to eat like, oh, the goes, now. Chicken McNuggets are made of the same bowl of champion. I'm going to eat chicken McNuggets as well. Yeah, the, the, the doctor out. said I can. So. The doctor said I need more yeah. fats. Awesome, let's Healthy go. Healthy fats. The brain's made of fats. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, it's a crazy world out there. Even my friend Patrick's in China, sugar addict on YouTube. He's saying there's a big thing over there, but I think that, that Asians think rice is made of fat. Yeah. Right? And yeah. like, that's just like dumb and dumb. That's so sad. That's like the end of the world. Any rice. Yeah. You know, even fruit and stuff. Like, they get an education, they get some money so they go watch TV, and then TV says, look at this. And then, so they, then they change their diet and start gaining weight, and they're like, oh yeah, like, and oh. that's what the world is just like. They forget the thousands of years they've been, like their culture's been lean, eating tons of rice. And we put out thousands of videos on the internet, and our biggest competition, not biggest competition, our biggest uh, haters are, are vegans, you know? And they're always, every single one of them is always out of shape, saying our advice is wrong. It's, it's a weird world out there. You, you have to <laughs> laugh at how dumb it all is sometimes. Otherwise, you just cook yourself. If you don't have a sense of humor, you won't laugh. You won't last. It's whoever's got the loudest voice at the end of the day. To last, you must laugh. So when you're doing a time shop, do a tap. If you're too hard on yourself, too late, you won't get your best time. If you can just stay smooth, controlled, focused, relaxed, you always do a PR. Have fun. Have fun. Like a wasp. Like this wasp, you know, it is just doing its thing. Its focus is getting the sugar. He's not taking things personally. I definitely don't swap the way. <laughs> 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 That's not a punch. A lot of people do that. Yeah, they might attack. And I've, I've seen people, like, a wasp goes on them. Some people in life will, will run in front of a, a speeding semi trailer to escape a little fruit fly or a wasp. <laughs> you know, be like. Some people just spray, like, like, spray it, kill it with fire. <laughs> one, one time I had a scorpion on my hands, and I was up here you know, just trolling all the tourists, and I'd have it on my hands, and a lot of tourists would walk past, and they wouldn't even see it. They'd look at my hand, but they would not see it. And I knew they wouldn't, because I'd memorize it, who it was, and then when they come past again, I was like, hey, check it out. And they'd be like, oh! <laughs> and even though they looked at my hand, they could not see the scorpion there. There's a big, big ass scorpion. I wish I had a GoPro here to film the reactions. I was there for about an hour. I was just really getting off on like 
people's reactions to it all. Some kids were like, oh. And some people were like, oh, wow, yes, that's feces. And some people, especially handbag basics from USA and <laughs> Australia, were just like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> losing it. And it was so cool because it was I didn't change my body language or anything. Nothing changed. The only thing was just people's program, what program they run in their brain, what their process was running. It was it OSX, it was it Yosemite, El Capitan, <laughs> Windows, DOS, whatever. So it was really cool. Yeah. You know, really awesome. About, to see people's about animals, can you explain to us how you did this famous outro with this with spider coming out of the spider them? in my mouth? Uh, I just saw a girl on the internet do that. And I was just like, whoa. And I've been, I've been handling spiders for over 30 years, ever since I was about eight years old. And you know, I, like, I love spiders and helping them out and stuff. And, and then I saw this girl put the huntsman spider in her mouth. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. Next level. So then I did it. <laughs> and I did it. And because I've handled spiders so well, I can read their body language really well. Okay. And I know when is a good time and when is not a good time. So it doesn't hurt the spider. How did you get it in your mouth then? You basically you get the huntsman, it has to be sort of, you know, no, no bigger than your hand, and you, you gently, you have it on your body for maybe five, ten minutes, it gets used to you, and then you have it on your hand, you sort of, you blow it gently, and it curls up, and then you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's about staying cool and calm. Okay. Is that vegan, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Down, Imagine the spider cleans its feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's E12 right there, though. Yeah. And, that, that, and that's, that's why I feel I can do so well on social media, is to know how to just, like, calm. Yeah. Turn on, turn off. Uh, and that, that really helps in life, being able to turn on and turn off. Because if you panic, and you, you can show that spider, you can kill you, that spider can go on your lungs. It'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. So you got to stay cool and calm. But what the spider did in your mouth? Did you stay collected? Or? Uh, sometimes they sort of tap around a bit. <laughs> tap around. <laughs> <laughs> they got eight legs. They got eight, eight feet. Foot dance. In there. <laughs> <laughs> it's most, but most of the time they just sort of curl up. And then as soon as you open, they see the light, they crawl out. It's great. It's a great effect. And then they'll let it go in the garden. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's, a good, it's a good audience retention one. It's un it's unwatchable. You can't unwatch that. <laughs> unwatchable. Unwatchable. What is it? Un unwatchable or unwatchable? Un unwatchable? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unforgettable, I think is what it is. Yeah, it's really good word. Yeah. Can't unplant. Yeah. What happened to that guy who, in, in the film Pure Fruit who was eating the rotten meat? Oh, Ian! What happened to Ian in 2009? I felt, we felt did, really sorry for him. Yeah, we did a little real life documentary in 2009 in Queensland. Uh, Mango, the Strutarian guy, was involved in a documentary, he got us to come in as well. And they created a bit of characters with it. And if you type in YouTube Pure Fruit, you'll see us back in 2009. And you see me trolling as well. And then we had a, a friend, Ian, who used to eat like raw, rotten meat. Yeah. Like, like, he was like turning green and stuff. Yeah. And his belief was like, yeah, and with butter. Vegans don't get enough B12. And he was, he went to, he almost died one time from food poisoning. I don't think he'd have teeth on. No, he, just, he lost all his teeth on that. And he also, he, he claimed that the, he didn't almost die, it was a, a good detox. It was a deep detox. And he was angry <laughs> at the doctors who gave him intravenous life support to save his life because that interrupted his detox. <laughs> so again, the, the level of mental illness, I think everyone's got mental illness to some degree. But some people just, it goes, goes in a negative fashion. Yeah, he would like get kangaroo, raw kangaroo, and like get like a chunk of butter with it. So it's like pure butter in the eat it like that. But uh, like what happened to him? Like, is he alive? He's disappeared. So. I, don't, I don't think he's doing enough. I mean, he's not, he's definitely not doing that diet anymore. I've got a mutual friend, he says he sort of moved off somewhere else. It shows how resilient the human body is, yeah. to be able to do that to your body and still live. But it was a good example of like, he couldn't work properly, he was just like on edge all the time. And you see in that documentary, I was, I was sort of treading on ice around him when I was talking to him. So I was really honest with him, he was just, he'd be like a volcano. He ate a lot of honey though, didn't he? 
Mango is actually the first guy I learned. He was actually the first guy I learned that world boot from in 2001. Nice guy, but his goal was to be famous and well known. And when he saw us just like cut, he's just like, "Hey, what about me?" You know? So a lot, of, a lot of people treat you differently when you get more fame or money than them. A lot of people can't handle it, which is stupid because they should be inspired. Versus well, it's a filter to get rid of those people. It's a filter. Your success, fitness, happiness. We'll filter in good people and filter out shit cunts. <laughs> yeah, so, so your quality of life becomes a filter. It's really cool. You, you repel strongly rainbows and victim consciousness people, and you'll attract more like-minded people in your life. Just like here today. We could say, okay, guys, like you know, we'll just have the Q and A down the flat, and you know, don't don't feel obliged to ride a bike, and like let's just get motor scooters actually, because you know, like bikes, biking is a bit like. No one wants to be a professional biker, and we could have done that, and just maybe go ride a bike if you want no judgment, and that's good, but it's not like what we want. It's not good. It's not not good. It's not goodable. <laughs> so we wanted to create Ray Laser Bar, and then people raise the bar as well, and everyone comes up the hill, and after three weeks of riding a bike up a hill, you're totally cooked. And then you go home or whatever, you have a week of recovery, and you're like, man, like I've ridden my bike up the hill, epic hill, I've done so much. Pretty much every single person here is going to ride a bike more elevation in the next three weeks than ever before. Most of us will. Cool. And that's really yeah, awesome. That's daily achievements. Yeah. It's so cool. Stage, yeah, stage seven today. Yeah. Stage eight. So every day you're achieving. It's really cool. And, that, and then people go home with skills under the belt. Anyone can go sit in a Q&A in a park. Mm. Ride the scooter there. Yeah. But when you come up here as a daily routine, it's really awesome. And that is just, that's a template we're trying to instill upon people so when they go home, Back to the countries, etc. They can you know, wake up in the morning, have their breakfast, have a snack, go for a ride, come back, start work. It's a good routine to get into. We're trying to teach templates and routines here, so people will get results long term and carry it on. And I've seen some pretty amazing body transformations over the last year, and it all corresponds. The faster you go up the mountain, the more time you shave off your PR, the more that body's changing. It's epic. I've seen, I've seen some crazy transformations this year. Like, wow, really cool, really cool. For people who were here last year, you know, almost some of them unrecognizable. Well, right, double, double take, that, well, oh wow, they just, yeah. Question. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I was wondering what happened with Francis Nate, because he used to be like a lot in your vlog. What happened with Francis Nate? Long Nate? story. Long story. She was, uh, probably won't go there, but no, she's, well, we're still sort of friends, but she sort of got off the radar a bit. So I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's more, it's, you know, like, I don't want to sum it up in a sentence, you know, when it deserves more time than that. It's just, um, yeah, it's not important. Right? <laughs> I don't think you're vegan anymore. What's your take on, I mean, you've probably had this idea, and you've probably tried it before, but taking people who are seem really interested, and then like coaching them for a month and just helping them make a complete transformation, you know? Yeah. Well, you can in a month. Like, complete transformation as in with the ego. Just, well, just taking charge, helping them like with training, helping them with food, helping them to show them that. I you know, because like I think a lot that. of people who have like success, YouTube. they feel. Sorry? I feel like we're doing that with people here as well. Yeah. So we're all coming together and people are transforming. Yeah. And that's the power of YouTube is because people can take you home with them. You know, someone always oh, now I'm uploading my 14 day video and just send me upload than that last four days. 14 day video course. I used to sell that and I'll look up for free. Uh, I'll be uploading it last night. And so people can take that and watch it on a smartphone. People can take us home with them on social media. What would it be like to do that as a more of an intensive thing? Yeah, or just the yeah, idea I mean, of like I'll, I'll creating a thing out of like if I would take someone on the street, like I've even thought of just the idea of taking like a homeless person, you know, and like uh, what could you do? 99% of homeless people want to be homeless. They're like victim consciousness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, they've got other problems. And I'll be just homeless. the idea of I'll taking, yeah. taking some. Like I did it with my mom and that was easy because it's my mom. Yeah. So it's like a month with her just taking complete charge of her training program and her 
Dieting. I think they gotta wanna. They gotta run it, man. Cause you can. Something in there, like they wanna improve. Yeah. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it think. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it think. I, I would be open to doing like a, <laughs> an intensive sort of thing. I think it'd be just sort of fun. I get to bully someone for a month. Humiliate <laughs> him on camera. Just kidding, but. I think it'd be. That's got some virtue in it for YouTube audience, stuff like that, entertainment value. But people can get that while watching our content or coming here and stuff like that, really. You mean if they're committed enough, they can find the content and just yeah. do it themselves? Yeah, my ebooks, Rennie's ebook, our videos. <coughs> Most people here know that we've got to offer, with the exception of maybe like fine tuning your brakes or what lines to take down a hill, but we even cover that in most videos. So. Good. Pretty much 99% of our stuff is online, and 99% of it is free. It comes down to a person wanting it, having that desire for it. But, but I, I enjoy helping people who are motivated. But there's nothing that repels you more than a victim. It's like, it's like, it's like I just, my brain just goes like limp. Like what did you just say? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> yeah, you can tell within the first minute of talking to someone where their minds are. Yes. Um, I mean, you can come out of that as well, of course. Yeah. Are your stories at Canterbury or in your hospital? Yeah. What about them? Oh, you said you had crazy stories this day? Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm thinking which is, which is PG. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 well, yeah. it's not what I do, it's what I saw. In Chambury, in Kopenyang, in Penang, in Hat Yai. No, no, you haven't. I'll, I came to Thailand by myself 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. No, 2007. <coughs> we were not together. We were like a couple of days in Chambury. I was there for three months in Thailand. Yeah, it's, yeah, when people get on the car, mental illnesses can creep in because they're not sleeping properly and they're not hydrated properly and they're throwing the heat and people can go like full on, their yeah, negative paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah. Like, really like, people follow me like, do what I want. they're after me. You know, and they, they're like actually in a psychosis, <laughs> like a bad one. And uh, even in Costa Rica, one guy got locked up. There's one time a fruitarian guy, um, they found him masturbating at a bus stop in Costa Rica, naked. <laughs> and uh, so the, the police arrested him and deported him. Um, yeah. You know, that's like people that take meth, right? Yeah. So people think it's the meth that actually get, makes them go crazy, but it's a lot of it's like sleep, yeah. like water. You yeah. just get to drink, you don't have any. Yeah. Uh, glucose in your brain. Yeah. And it's like you're in the desert and you start seeing mirages and stuff. Yeah. And that's what it's basically needs on being mad. Most schizophrenics don't sleep. Bingo. And they start hearing voices. Oh, yeah. And people with they smoke cigarettes and they take like a villafinal lap. And, and uh, <laughs> a One of my friends was like camping in a forest and not drinking water. And he was, he was starting to slip into psychosis. And so I started mentally manipulating him to create paranoia. So he'd come out of the forest and reintegrate in our group and start eating and drinking. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of experience dealing with mental health patients and getting the best out of them. So it's uh, interesting. Because it, it's al always 100% comes down to sleep, water, sugar. And the psychiatry industry doesn't want to believe that because there's no money in that. you got someone who's in a psychosis and they want to kill themselves, pop them full of 500 bucks of medications. You know, lock them up for a few weeks and that's like 20 grand. Or handcuff them, put an IV glucose chip in them, watch them come back into like consciousness and oh, wow, what's going on? And you know, maybe chuck a sleep pill in them, sleep them out for a couple of hours, and they come good the next day. Nah, don't do that. There's no money in that. So the, the industry, if you can't control yourself, someone's going to control you, and they're going to be making bank on it. They're going to be banking. Any difference between uh, uh, green sugar and brown sugar? Green sugar? No, white, green, green white, white, uh, white sugar. sugar. Any difference between white sugar, brown sugar? They both work fantastically. Brown sugar for me tastes better. It has more minerals in it, but any of them is good. And I prefer the organic sugar. I like to pay for organics and farmers. 
No, the, the bone char. Is it actually that, that's never in the actual end product in the USA. It's bone char. It's in the filter, but it's not in the end product. So sugar's still vegan. But either sugar you like, that organic. The main thing is get enough. That you notice big, your your legs feel so much stronger on the bike, and your brain is is better. You can pay attention more. You're better mood. More sugar. Definitely. And you, you you won't crave chocolate or anything. Because you're like, oh. Why would I have that? I've got enough sweet. What's, what's your take on that, really? Hmm? Not craving chocolate? What's my take on it? Yeah. As in, like, what do I recommend to not crave chocolate? Do you still not want to eat chocolate, even though you're sugared up? Um, if I, like, if I'm under carb, then it might be appealing to me, but, you know. Last time I had chocolate was maybe, maybe eight months ago or something, had a taste of it, or maybe had, like, chocolate on a donut, or vegan, of course. Uh, but it is all about getting enough um, sugar, oh, so enough fruit too. Like that's why I try and get 2,000 calories from fruit per day, and that just knocks out any like simple sugar craving. Yeah. You got to get simple sugars. Got to get simple. Get sugar. them from chocolate. You get them from fruit, or you get them from you know toenuts. So like we need simple sugar. I used to eat a kilo of chocolate a day. I was a bit white messenger. <laughs> Literally, I have like uh, yeah four. 250 gram cabbage blocks of chocolate, or have a kilo bag of M&Ms, literally, and I just have that in my, my jersey, be sitting there, and I just, I just love being in the elevator, unwrapping the block of chocolate. I was lean as, I'm not just lean as now, but I was pretty lean. I, I'm unwrapping the block of chocolate, and to be buying it in the elevator, and all these executives looked at me like, I'm getting chocolate. It's a bit tasty, man. You want some? I was rolling, and I felt like crap, though, but I was lean, and I just had this full on chocolate addiction. You know, I couldn't break it, man. And now I don't crave chocolate at all because I get enough simple sugars. That's all it is. It's not emotional eating. It's like you need simple sugars, and the more active and passionate you want to be, the more simple sugars you need. So you eat, so you eat chocolate, or you eat fruit, smoothies, sweet stuff, jam sandwiches, etc. Or you're going to be having to smash the chocolate. The problem, with, the problem with chocolate is so much grease in it. Yeah, so much and fat. Yeah, yeah, the theobromine, the cow. Thing, the cow. The cow. The cow. The casein. Opiates. There's that one, but yeah, you've got yeah, vegan right. chocolate, same thing. Oh, vegan chocolate, yeah. yeah. So, like, I, mean, I can go and eat vegan chocolate, but I've got no craving for it. Yeah. If someone offers me like a, a little thing of chocolate, say, hey, can you try my new product, vegan, I'll, I'll, I'll taste and give some feedback, but I'm not going, oh, no, where's the chocolate bar? Yeah. Yeah. Is it in your cliff bars? What's that? Is it in your cliff bars? Yeah, occasionally there's like a bit of chocolate chip, but it's like, we're talking like, you know, it's, it's, it's like a sprinkle versus like a chocolate bar. Mm. I mean, you can, you, can buy, you can buy big blocks of chocolate. I haven't eaten a big block of vegan chocolate for over a decade. So, yeah. and that's, not, that's not willpower, that's just like, chocolate makes you feel greasy, and I can get it, my car's not up and get a sweet fix. See, so, yeah, it's not discipline. It's just getting up sweets, you're good to go. I think the boys going to start the... Oh yeah, what time is it? It is nine o'clock. So nine we'll keep we'll keep talking until they turn up. Are they here? No. Hey, you and Callum. I think they started already. What's that? I think they started already. Did they start already? No. They were doing something by the stairs. Okay. Are you sure? Because they said they're going to come back there. Like they have a group there, and they were like, uh, it looks like they were starting, but I'm not 100 sure. About it. We'll do a couple more questions and wrap up anyway because it's nine. I'm going to form a wallet. Maybe. Do you eat beans? Do you like them? What do you think about them? Do we eat beans? Do we like them? What do you think about them? Do we eat beans? More of a condiment. We, every meal we focus on the carbohydrate. On the, the sugar, the rice, the fruit, the potato, the corn. Definitely a side dish. A condiment. Eat your beans. It's more about the sugar. Eat your beans, eat your greens. <laughs> Just don't fill up them so much that you don't get enough rice or potato. That's, that's where the fuel comes from, that, that's where the work ethic comes from. When I sit down to a meal or a smoothie, I'm like, how much, how much work ethic has this gotten for me? You know? There's too much fat, and now I'm just like, I don't do nothing. But it's, you know, work ethic fuel. That's why I base my food on there. Food is fuel, it's not entertainment. So, two questions, two personal questions for each of you. For Harley. What has been your biggest, who has been your biggest motivation over the years? And for Freely, if it was one person that you had to convert to veganism, like today, who that person would be? 
So my biggest motivation, yeah. how do you mean the person who's inspired me the most? Yeah. Wouldn't be one person, it'd be thousands of people I meet. I meet people every single day, in person or in my inbox. And the stories I see, and I could say it's just one person. Insane. I mean, my mum's been a big inspiration watching her overcome challenges, and you know, that was really cool to see that and be exposed to that. Watch her break down and cry and then get back up and just keep charging on. So, that, that was good exposure. Mm -hmm. So, I'd say probably my mum as a, a good example of that. She gave up a lot, she sort of burned herself out, but at the start, she was doing really well. Now, she's sort of getting back on track a bit now. Really? Who would you want to go vegan? Who's the most powerful person in the world? <laughs> Who is it? Do you think the American? I reckon Kylie Jenner. Yeah, Kylie Jenner. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Kylie Jenner. I want her to go vegan. If there's one person, like Kendall, yeah. Kendall or Kylie. If there's one person on the planet right now that has the most influence, I would say it's Kylie Jenner. I would say it's Kylie Jenner. So you think about who? Like who's seven. the most followed person on social media? Snapchat. She's number one follower. Um, Instagram? Instagram has like 70 million followers. She's <laughs> <laughs> kind of going crazy now. How much of it has bought? Who knows? A lot. But she, I would say she'd be number one. Follow. I mean, like her lip kits or whatever sold out within three, three minutes. minutes. Yeah, three minutes. Who, like who, yeah. who on earth can sell brand. a product out in three minutes? Every time she puts it out, it's like in a couple of minutes it gets sold out. Like millions of products. Yeah. <laughs> like shitty products as she well. She can sell anything. Yeah. So you think reaching the masses with the, the vegan message compared to like if you would convert a casino resort owner and they would make all their casinos completely vegan, the whole product line down the bottom? No, because people people want to follow someone. They want idols, they want leaders. A casino, that would be awesome. But people are like to see the fucking vet and fuck hookers, they're not really there to get ethical. When you go to casino, it's what you're about, Vegas. Was it, isn't that like, wouldn't that be a good thing though, getting the people who disconnect? Yeah, and, it would, it'd be awesome, but not as powerful as Kylie Jenner. Because Kylie Jenner said go vegan. In the US today, if you could, if you could look at the, the price of how much money gets spent on vegan food, it would just like peak the highest ever today. Yeah. Kylie Jenner put out 10 tweets and 10 goes, go vegan, it's really important, this is what you should eat. That would spite the vegan market like that. Imagine she put out like a vegan menu plan. Yeah. Cool. Well, be like, cool. And then all the business people will adapt because people yeah, want that's it. Yeah, that's all because they know the money's in it then. Yeah. And that's, yeah. why, that's, why, that's why I've been really the most powerful vegan actress in history ever. People, people hate that fact, some people do. But the only reason, not, not that we're special, but just we're so active on social media. Yeah. We're not good speakers or gifted or philosophers. We're just fucking big trolls on the internet <laughs> and we've got a massive fucking audience. We're so fucking... Hey, speak yourself. Right. We're so popular. <laughs> Literally, people can start up a Patreon account, donate to me, I Hate Durin Rider, and people will donate to them. <laughs> Seriously, people can create a the I Hate Durin Rider fund. Of, our, of hating us. <laughs> Literally. Like, you know, even High Carbon Hannah's a good example, sort of resolved a bit of, bit of banter, but she was a good example. She, oh, she got, got some following by hating, put out a book, and then sold a bit, and now she's doing a lot for herself. That's how much of a following we have. That is the power, not of, of us, but it's just the power of social media. Everyone here today is here on social media. In 2007, Philly wanted to give me a laptop. I was like, oh, I don't want to get a laptop, you know, it's like radiation, and like, I'm a minimalist, you know? <laughs> and she's like, well, how are you going to reach people? I'm like, oh, I just feel like, you know, serendipity. <laughs> <laughs> serendipity. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing that with, right? No, so, <laughs> social media, man, that is... So, the, the, to make influence, you have to influence the influencers. And the biggest influence is all on social media. Because, and the, the, the generation that's spending the most money, that gets the most passionate in the things, is the 16 to 25 year olds. They're the people who, like, line up for an iPhone 7 for fucking four days. You know? That's because Apple's hyped it up so well iPhone 7 is no better than iPhone 6 Galaxy, it's the same shit really. So people would line up for it, for an Apple product. Social media. Social media. Right, one more question. Where are the guys? Yeah, yeah. I can take some descending questions. What's that? I can take some descending questions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm over here. Come up on the stage.
Christian? Descending. What's your name? Vega. Vega. What? I'm gonna head on down. Uh, first thing though, uh, when you pass people, always go on the right side. Pass on the right side when you pass people going downhill. Uh, and always pay attention up the road. Yeah. So when you descend yeah. and you are in a very steep descent, do you tilt your body at the back of the bike? I go in the back, yeah. Okay. Just feel like I get more brake force. Okay. I just lift my butt up and push backwards. And which brake do you start? Do you start the, the, the rear one or the front one or both at the same time? I use both. The front one is the most powerful. Yeah. But also you should never do it too hard because then you will lock up the wheel. Okay. Especially if it's raining, you should stay away from the, from the front, in the corners. Okay. And when you corner, yeah. do you just tilt or you just, um, I don't know how to explain it? Do you, do you go really like that or you just lean toward the, the side you're turning? Um, just tilt your bike, not really your body. Okay. And lean forward towards your front wheel. If it's if you like going like this, okay. How fast should you go? Huh? How fast should you go down here? Just go as easy as possible. I'm trying to track. I've got enough track already. Should you go close to the side of the road or? Uh, try and stay away from the inside. If they can be gravel and glass and stuff. Yeah. Okay.